Hey y'all! So, uh, in my last video I talked a bit about feminist issues and I thought it was a bit interesting but I did get carried away in a bit of a random rant. So, this video I'm going to kind of be a bit more balanced or at least I'm going to try to be and take on a different feminist issue or, well actually not a feminist issue, kind of a, kind of a general Hollywood or representational issue in general if you will. I just thought this would make an interesting topic, and it is a very complex topic, even if you don't think it is. And that topic is... Women representation in film, sex symbols in film, and general presentation of sexuality in film. Alright, this is a big issue. So, if you talk to... to people that, that point out sexist issues, because sexist issues still happen, one of the dialogues that will often come up is how women are often betrayed in media. And that is women tend to be betrayed in one way. They, they look all certain way, they're the same kind of thinness, same kind of body structure, what have you. The problem with this is, of course, women are kind of like men. <laughs> they look in countless different ways and whereas men are allowed to look countless different ways in Hollywood you got fat dudes you got bald dudes you got a bit more variety women don't have the same kind of variety and then the result of this is there's one standard look for girls and there's a lot of pressure on girls to look that way you'll notice on magazine covers there's these stunning women so the statement is you should be stunning too now that's definitely an issue no one's saying that's not an issue because it is it's raising a standard that's a pretty hard for a lot of people to reach and it's not very honest either not everybody looks that way but when you start to tear apart this issue and say that's a bad idea you got to be a bit careful about how you do it here's an example Okay, let's look at a video game, because video games are famous for trading women well. Am I right? Am I right? So, video games are kind of infamous for their over-the-top sex appeal in their women to the 10th degree. Think of a cover with a glossy woman to the 10th degree. They often, for fighting games specifically, like Mortal Kombat style, they'll give the girl a really jokey outfit that barely covers it all. Oh, and she'll fight in said outfit. And the first words that come to your mind if you see sex appeal as an issue, for the reasons I just explained, is you'll get mad at that character for looking that way. But you just crossed the line. You didn't even realize it, but it did. Because you're going to go to Comic Con next year and there's going to be a girl dressed exactly like that. You see, that's the line right there. Some girls do look that pretty and some girls like to have fun and dress however they want. So my point that I'm trying to make is yes it's bad that there's only one way a woman is shown but you should never get mad at that woman herself for looking that way because she was probably born that way that's not her that's not her fault. A good example of this is the new trailer for Sin City 2. Midway through the trailer this stripper pops out at the screen and just starts dancing like crazy. Now, you and me and I and you and you and everyone knows the only reason that is in there is to sell a, a specific body image. And just like everything else, it's saying women have to look a specific way. Well, see, here's the thing. The stripper is not the bad guy. She just happens to look that way. She's just an actress doing a job. She's not doing anything wrong. She's playing a role. She's not a bad guy. We shouldn't get mad at her. That's slut shaming. People are allowed to be strippers. It's a job. You get paid for it. The problem is Frank Miller. He wrote the script. He directed most of the films. And his comic book history with his presentation of women isn't very nice. He's well known for being a little bit on the sexist side. So we shouldn't blame the stripper actor. She's probably a really good actress. We should blame Frank Miller. And that's where I'm saying the line is because sometimes when, if you talk to people who have problems with sexual representation in media, they'll point out like Halloween costumes. Halloween costumes 
do the same thing. They try to make all women look the same way. There's a sexy version of Alex from Clockwork Orange Halloween costume. There's a sexy pirate, a sexy fairy, a sexy everything. There's no regular anything. There's no regular pirate for women. It doesn't exist, only the sexy version. So you kind of want to get mad at that because you're saying all women have to look this certain way. But then again, you're going to go do your Halloween party this year and a girl's going to be dressed up in the outfit. So, yeah. So what I'm trying to say is don't get mad at girls wearing those outfits or girls like acting out fictional characters that they saw on the show and that they thought were cool. Get mad at filmmakers and game designers and costume Halloween makers for not making variety, for not showing the, the expanses and complexities of humanity. And sometimes you can't even get mad at filmmakers for doing that. Here's another good re example. Um, Robert Rodriguez, well, like, he made From Dusk Till Dawn. That's an awesome movie. I don't know if you've seen that movie, but you got to see it. But if you watch that movie, they go into a strip club and they fight vampires. Like, And it's awesome, by the way. It's awesome. But if you watch that movie and, and you go in that mindset that you know sex symbols raise the bar too high for a lot of women, you might not like that movie. You might not get a kick out, which, is, which would be a crying shame. But you got to remember with Robert Rodriguez, he's stylizing his films. He's paying tribute to old school cheesy exploitation films that he got kicked out when he was a little kid. So he doesn't see as sexist and he's tr not trying to be mad, mean towards women. He's just trying to play tribute to a style of film that he liked when he was a kid. So is that really bad? Is he a bad guy? Or is From Dusk Till Dawn just an awesome movie? See, there's a lot of gray lines, and it's a much more complex issue than people give it credit for. But I do think there are certain people who just scream, I'm the bad guy. And, like, people that you you look into, like, like Frank Miller, if you do some research, he kind of screams, I'm a bad guy in this situation. So maybe that's the statement I should make. If you see a movie that seems like it's selling a certain type of symbolism or it seems like it's saying women can only look one way and yada, 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 do your research. Back up your thesis. You know, look into it. And maybe it'll turn out the guys behind it didn't mean bad things. Or maybe they'll, it'll turn out they were dicks. But never, ever, ever, ever get mad at a girl for wearing a skimpy Halloween costume. Maybe it was the only thing she could find because they only make skimpy Halloween costumes. It's ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, I do think sex symbols in Hollywood is an issue. I do think women are all expected to look the same. But we should never get mad at those specific women. We should get mad at the people for not hiring the other women that look other ways. You know, Rocky is one of my all-time favorite movies. And that everybody looks down to earth like real people. Why can't other movies be like that? You know, we Hollywood movies are just storytelling. And I like my stories with a bit more honesty. So, another random rant. But I think this one's a good one. So, what do you think? Do you think that when sexuality is shown in films, it's all just stylization and fun? Or do you think the directors have a right, uh, uh, you know, they gotta be honest a little bit. And if they just keep selling the same thing over and over, more and more women will think they have to look a certain way. That's not good. So, big issue. So once again, don't get mad at Catwoman. Catwoman, don't get mad at, at, at Supergirl. Don't get mad at the stripper in the Frank Miller movie. Get mad at everybody who did such a crummy job working out the script. And, and don't get mad at Megan Fox. Get mad at Michael Bay. It's easier. He's an easy guy to get mad at. Trust me. And it's a lot more fun.